All right, this is the uh, reassembly of the Sheldon Lathe Quick Change Gearbox. So I'm left to go to bearing service and get the Torrington BH912. A little bit more pricey, local, but the right bearing. I don't know. So I'm just putting these in. So I can get this show on the road. Now me, uh, habit of pressing things in that have a press fit, obviously. What I like to do is, in this case, I've got a machine surface here. Uh, probably could run a file over the top of it. I'll do that. All right, with that filed, since I do have a machine surface, um, what I like to do is just kind of square it up using a square and a small object just till I can't see the light anymore. Kind of get it in two different directions if possible. Check this side again. Looks pretty decent. So now it's square to the face that the hole has been bored into. So I guess, uh, you know, just give it a whack. And it starts. You give it another check. You should be good. Sometimes you won't be, but you should be good. In this case, I'm good. So take it down like that with that. And then we'll come in with a ball peen hammer to make it flush to the surface. Okay, so I mean, in this video, we're we're continuing on putting um, all the bearings back in place. I have to replace the bearings in these gears. Uh, they're about four thou sloppy. A um, couple are a little bit worse, but they're um, they got to be pressed out. As this one has been pressed out and then pressed in obviously I've got to do those and then I also have the bearings made for the tumblers or dogs whatever you want to call them those have to be pressed in reassemble the quick change gearbox and then uh, get it back on the lathe and see if it's the conditions have improved hopefully it will have improved and um i will continue on moving down the line yeah i've got to press out these old bearings pressing the new ones make sure they fit flush to the faces of these gears get all that reassembled on the shafts and uh let's get going All right, so we got to press the bearings out, the little sleeve bearings. You can see how thin they are, worn pretty good. I press those out and then uh, press the new ones in and make sure they're flush to the face of the gears. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And um, this is just a bit of luck. This is just an old transfer punch for transferring screw holes. Just happened to be the right diameter for uh, pressing these out. So, otherwise, I would have to turn something down in order to get that bearing out of there. This just happened to work. So, all right, uh, just keep on going and bring it back when I'm ready to put them. Put the new bearings in. All right. So now we're going to put the bearings in. So. Since I made these myself, I don't know if you can see that little lead. That's just a hair under the nominal size. 
and that way it allows me to uh, to get them started just kind of so they're setting in the hole somewhat into the bore and they're ready to be pressed in uh, you can do this on a lot of things that you're going to press in just give yourself a little lead like that And you can see this one shaved itself right down, which is fine. Just make sure that we're flush. Okay. Let me go ahead and do the rest of them and... Uh, Bring you back when we're going to put these on the shafts. And then here I'm going to press out the uh, the bushings on the tumblers. Uh, I've already got that set up and going. So again, use whatever mandrel you've got to push on, to push with. If you don't have anything, turn something down. In this case, I've got a, uh, a lamina drill sleeve. Just the right diameter. So that's what I'm going to use. So, all right. There's that one. Get the sleeve out and reposition. Well, actually, because this one is so worn, if you can see that edge, that it doesn't want to push through it wants to push the mandrel out. So this one I'm going to have to tap out with a chisel. <clears throat> Just tap on the edges until it comes out. So this one I'm going to do on the bench. So this one you see I got set up, and again, like I said, the edge is so worn on the bushing that I'm just going to tap it out over here. <clears throat> Shouldn't take much. One tap, I guess. So you can see how this thing is worn and why this would not function. All one-sided. Pretty amazing, I guess. All right, let's get the new ones in.
And here's this predicament. You got to get that gear, then the other gear in this space, on this shaft, tapping it from in there, because there's no access up here to tap it straight through or push it straight through. So it is what it is. This is going to take a while. I don't know if I'll be able to film it, but I'll do my best. Um, I guess I kind of got ahead of myself uh, on the reassembly. As, you know, things get difficult, you turn the camera off to try to get ahead and um, be able to do some of the things that take more than two hands or you got to really get close in on it and you'll not be ever going to be able to film it. So, and then <clears throat> by the time you look, you realize that you got more assembled than you thought you would have gotten assembled. And in this case, pretty much the whole thing other than mounting it back on the machine. Um, it wasn't an easy process by no means. Um, back in here, on this shaft here, uh, that was kind of a pain in the butt. Again, as I showed, there was no access on the outside to be able to tap that into place. So what I ended up doing was using a, um, a bar clamp and slowly tightening up the bar clamp and pressing the shaft into place and sliding the gears <clears throat> onto the shaft. And these shafts also went on pretty straightforward, um, just making sure that they're balanced as far as uh, uh, end, end play goes. Not having too much, not having too little, because you do need some. Same thing with this side. You know, all this stuff has to has to be kind of in the right spot. Uh, you need some play, and in this case, you need some for this length here, so that way the lead screw will go back on, as well as the taper pin going in. This is free spinning. This is threaded. And then there's also a set screw uh, in one of those holes. But this just free spins, kind of a spacer. But that's it, it's all together. Um, last remaining item is to uh, put back onto the lathe. Let me flip this unit over and show you the, uh, the tumblers and how they fit. Okay, and here's the tumblers. This is kind of what started the whole thing. And I don't know if you can remember back earlier in the videos um, how much uh, play was in this gear side to side. Same thing with this one. There was a ton of play. And that allowed the gear that's on this shaft up in here to work its way side to side on all the other gears, not engaging them properly and skipping. Consequently... You can see on that gear, down in there, the wear that took place uh, from one side to the other. I'm hoping that that won't have an effect on the performance of this quick change gearbox for at least as long as I own this lathe. and Maybe whoever gets it when I'm done with it, uh, it'll still be working uh, well enough to, to do the job at hand. So I guess uh, I have to apologize for not filming every single step. If somebody was uh, following along closely for their repair, but um, I do apologize, and you can ask any questions in the comments, and uh, I will answer it to the best of my ability or the knowledge that I gained from this project. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and install it on the lathe and uh, give it a run. See what uh, what's next in this process of restoring this old lathe.